Goethe Institute has been promoting German language and culture around the world for 60 years. This week, our series Globetrotting with Goethe takes us to the Balkans, where artists are helping to heal the scars of conflict. We're on the road in Croatia with photographer Sandra Vitajic. Like other artists from Southern Europe, she's taking part in Daring to Remember, an attempt to come to terms with a war that's never really over. Sljeme is a popular place to go for hiking for people from Zagreb. It's really nice uh, green hill. But we're going there because uh, in 1991, a uh, 12-year-old girl and her mother were brought to Adolfovac and killed there. The mother and daughter were murdered because they were Serbs. It's totally different when you go to a place when you know that something like that happened. After a while, I couldn't walk through the woods without looking for some evidence of, of, of the events. I see my photograph as a, as a memento for those events, for those people who will never going to have a block or a, a monument. The pictures in her series, Infertile Grounds, show places where inconceivable horrors took place. I really started to think how that little girl felt when she was brought here in the middle of the night. So I really wanted a photograph to express that darkness and uh, that fear. The fragile branches, I took them as a symbol of that fragility of that young life that was taken here. Vitajic doesn't photograph only the sites of atrocities in the most recent war, but also extermination camps from World War II, like this one in Doña Gradina. The importance for me was uh, that it's such a slow process. You know, digitally, you would just walk around and shoot a lot of frames and then decide what you get. And for, with this, I have to decide in advance what I would like to shoot. When I get to a location, sometimes I would only have one or two frames to shoot. And uh, then I would have carefully to choose what is my motive uh, on each spot. Vitajic doesn't photograph people, just seemingly empty places. It is a part of nature, uh, a tree used to torture people. So I was just thinking about the tree while it was living, how it, it absorbed the horror that happens on it or under it. Here on the banks of the Sava River, tens of thousands of people died. Now it marks the border between Bosnia and Croatia. 300 kilometers downriver in Belgrade, with the help of the Goethe Institute, young Serbians are dealing with a very different aspect of the history of the Balkans. They're turning ships from the Tito era into a virtual museum. Time and again, they come upon traces of the past, although they'd rather leave their most recent history behind them. This uh, whole history thing is a kind of a, a big burden for all of us. We're all trying to you know, get rid of it and uh, maybe move on to something else and to talk about something else. The Goethe guerrillas have been meeting in Belgrade for a year. Why Goethe guerrillas and who are Goethe guerrillas? They're a group of young people between the ages of 20 and 25. We work together and develop ideas together. And we provide them with a sort of creative space where they can develop their own projects while they provide us with new ideas. Taking these cutouts to forgotten places. We actually wanted to refresh all places. For more than 10 years, Belgrade's National Museum has been closed due to lack of funding. The Good to Gorillas art project focused attention on it again. In Belgrade, writer Alexander Gatalica is also thinking about how memories should be dealt with in future. I understand the youngest generation as my daughter. Most of uh, youngsters who were babies it is obvious they, they don't want to speak about memory because this is not their memory. His short story is part of the Daring to Remember project. Katalica sends the devil on a journey through the Balkans. Where peace now reigns, the devil tries to kindle new conflicts between the ethnic groups. 
The Balkans were the festering navel of Europe, the unhealed wound still filled with pus, a place where wailing still echoed through the caves in the belly of the earth and the weirdly winding subterranean rivers. The wars in the mountains were over. But to this day, the wounds of the war haven't healed. We must count and name every single person like you, like me, with a name and surname, and Bosnians and Serbian part. And then we can stop to remember it and uh, put it under history. The Goethe Institute's Daring to Remember project is an important step. But as long as former wartime enemies fail even to agree on how many victims there were on each side, the wounds remain open. I see it as a, as a wound as well, because it, it's the wound that can heal for a while, but um, until we really heal it deeply, uh, it's not going to be in peace, I would say.